Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is series circuit relationships and we want to know what are the important mathematical patterns and relationships associated with series circuits and how do we use those relationships. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the distinction between series and parallel circuits. I've left a link to this video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. In a series circuit like this one, there's a single pathway by which charge can make it from one terminal of the battery to the other terminal of the battery. And any charge making that loop will pass through every resistor on that circuit. In contrast, parallel circuits offer multiple pathways by which charge can pass from the positive to the negative terminal of the battery. And in making that pathway, it passes through only a single resistor on that circuit. And that's because in a parallel circuit, the resistors are in their own separate branch. I'll have much more to say about parallel circuits in a later video. In this video, our focus is on series circuit. As you increase the number of resistors in a series circuit, the overall resistance increases, which causes the total amount of current in that circuit to decrease. And as we re if we were to remove a bulb from one of the sockets in that circuit, the other light bulbs would be unlit. The two schematic diagrams shown here illustrate the point that as the number of resistors increases, the overall resistance increases and the current decreases. In schematic diagram A, there are two 4 ohm resistors. There's also a new circuit symbol that is a circle with an A inside of it. That represents an ammeter and at its location it's measuring the current within the circuit and it is 1.5 amps in circuit A. In circuit B, we have three 4 ohm resistors, and the ammeter in that circuit is measuring a current of 1.0 amps. So, adding that additional resistor in circuit B causes the current to decrease. Now, since the current in a circuit is the battery voltage divided by the overall resistance, I imagine that circuit A would have an equivalent circuit that looks like this, where the two 4 ohm resistors were replaced with a single 8 ohm resistor, leading to a current of 1.5 amps. And for circuit B, an equivalent circuit would be this one here, where the three 4 ohm resistors were replaced by a single 12 ohm resistor, leading to an overall current of 1.0 amps. And put another way, in terms of current, we can say having two 4 ohm resistors is equivalent to having a single 8 ohm resistor, and having three 4 ohm resistors is equivalent to having a single 12 ohm resistor. The equivalent resistance of a multiple resistor circuit, like the ones we just saw, is the amount of resistance that a single resistor must have in order to match the effect of the collection of resistors. For a series circuit, that equivalent resistance value can be calculated by adding together the individual resistance values for those resistors in that series circuit. So, if you had three 4 ohm resistors placed together in series, the equivalent resistance would be 12 ohms. That's the amount of resistance an individual resistor must have in order to replace the collection of those three resistors. If you had 1 ohm, 2 ohms, and 3 ohms together in series, the equivalent resistance would be 6 ohms. And if you had 2 ohms, 3 ohms, and 4 ohms in series, the equivalent resistance would be 9 ohms. And if you had 4 ohms, 2 ohms, and 2 ohms in series, that would have an equivalent resistance of 8 ohms. Note that the order in which you place these resistors in the circuit does not have any effect upon the equivalent resistance. For a series circuit, the current is everywhere the same. That is to say that the current in the battery is the same as the current in the first resistor, and the current in the second resistor, and the current in the third resistor. To illustrate this, consider the circuit above. Its current is 1.5 amps, meaning that 1.5 amps is the current in the battery in every wire in each of the resistors. You can calculate the current using the so-called Ohm's Law relationship, that delta V is equal to I times R. R. Rearrange the current within any part of the circuit is equal to the voltage of the battery divided by the equivalent resistance. For the circuit above with its two 4 ohm resistors, the equivalent resistance is 8 ohms. 12 divided by 8 gives you the current of 1.5 amps. Here's another practice problem. We have a 12 volt battery powering two 3 ohm resistors. The equivalent resistance is 6 ohms, and when you do 12 volts divided by 6 ohms, 
ohms, you get a current of 2 amps everywhere within that circuit. As a second example, consider this 12 volt battery powering three 3 ohm resistors. The equivalent resistance is 9 ohms. Dividing 12 volts by 9 9 ohms gives you a current of 1.33 amps. These two examples illustrate the point once more that adding more resistors in series causes the total resistance to increase and the current to decrease. Every resistor in a series circuit causes a voltage drop or a decrease in electric potential. We represent this voltage drop by the symbol delta V. The value of delta V depends on two variables, the current in the circuit and the resistance of that resistor. The formulas we use to calculate voltage drop are applications of delta V equal I times R. To illustrate the use of these three formulas for calculating the voltage drop for a resistor, let's consider this example, where we have a 24 volt power source in three resistors, a 3 ohm, a 5 ohm, and a 4 ohm resistor. In order to calculate the voltage drop values, I first need to know the current in the circuit. So I proceed as I did on the previous slide by calculating the equivalent resistance of 3 ohms, 5 ohms, and 4 ohms. I simply add these together to get an equivalent resistance of 12 ohms. Now I can calculate the current by taking the battery voltage of 24 and dividing by the 12 ohms to get a current of 2 amps. With the current now known, I can calculate the voltage drops across each resistor. For the first resistor, I go 3 times 2 amps. For the second resistor, I'll go 5 times 2. And for the third resistor, I'll go 4 times 2. This gives me voltage drop values of 6 volts, 10 volts, and 8 volts. Now it ends up that if I take these three, resist three voltage drop values and add them together, 6 plus 10 plus 8, I get 24 volts. And that sum should always be equal to the voltage of the battery. An electric potential diagram is a conceptual tool that represents the amount of electric potential at various locations on a circuit. The circuit that we see here is a circuit we just analyzed with the 3 ohm, 5 ohm, and 4 ohm resistor powered by the 24 volt battery. Next to each resistor in this diagram is the voltage drops that we just calculated. At location A on the diagram, that's the positive terminal of the battery, so the charge is at its highest potential of 24 volts, as shown on the electric potential diagram. If we assume that there's negligible voltage drop in a wire, then the electric potential of location B is also at 24 volts, as shown on the diagram. But when charge passes from B to C, it's passing through a resistor, so there'll be a voltage drop of 6 volts, lowering the electric potential from 24 volts at B to 18 volts at position C. Location D on the diagram is on the same wire as location C. Assuming neg negligible voltage drop in a wire, it will have the same volts as, as location C, that's 18 volts. But as charge passes from location D to location E, it's passing through a resistor, giving it a 10 volt voltage drop, lowering its voltage from 18 volts down to 8 volts at location E. And location F is at the same electric potential as location E, but when charge passes from F to G, it's passing through the last resistor, lowering its volts by 8 volts down to 0 volts that's the negative terminal of the battery. When we represent a circuit with an electric potential diagram, we see why it makes sense that charge would gain 24 volts in a battery, but it must lose a total of 24 volts when it passes through the external circuit. I have a little conceptual practice question here on current. Since three identical bulbs are connected to a battery as shown, which adjustments could be made to the circuit to cause an increase in the current at location Z? And I have six choices to choose from. So here's what I need to know. First, I need to know that the current is everywhere the same, and I need to know that you calculate the current in the circuit, anywhere in the circuit, by going the battery voltage divided by the equivalent resistance using this equation right here. So now, if I want to increase the current at Z, then the I'm looking for any of these choices that would lead to an increase in the battery voltage or a decrease in the equivalent resistance. So let's go through our choices A through F. Choice A and B are very similar. Increase the resistance of one of the bulbs, increase the resistance of two of the bulbs. And since the equivalent resistance is the sum of the individual resistance value, increasing either one of those resistors or both is going to increase the equivalent resistance and thus, according to this equation, the current will go down, not up. So I don't want to pick A and B. C says decrease 
decrease the resistance of the two of the bulbs. That would cause an, a decrease in the total overall resistance value, R E Q, and thus an increase in the current. So I want to pick C, perfect choice. D, increase the voltage of the battery. So that's in the numerator of this equation, I equal delta V over over R equivalent. And so that's good. That's going to increase the current in the at location Z. So I'm going to pick D as well. And for opposite reasons, E, I'm not going to pick that. It's just the opposite of D. F, remove one of the bulbs from the circuit such that it's a two-bulb circuit. So if I were to do that, remove a bulb from the circuit and have a two-bulb circuit, then that would be less resistance and more current. So that's a good choice as well. So my final answer is C, D, and F. My second question is on voltage drop. It pertains to this circuit with three bulbs in series. They're identical bulbs, and I have letters on the diagram that come before and after every bulb. I'm looking for the one false statement among the six statements here. I need to know that the voltage drop for across any bulb is equal to the current in the circuit multiplied by the resistance of that bulb. So since every bulb is identical, every bulb has the same voltage drop as any other bulb. And then the second thing I need to know is the voltage drop across the, or the voltage drop across all three bulbs is equal to the battery voltage. So let's go in order through the statements. The delta V from A to C, which is, if you look on the diagram, it's two bulbs, is greater than that from B to C, which is one bulb. So that would be true because every voltage drops the same. Two bulbs is greater than one. B, delta V from A to B, that's a one bulb, is less than delta V from B to D, that's two bulbs. So that's a true statement. A, a to B would be less than B to D. C, the voltage drop from B to C is less than that from B to D. So that's a true statement as well because B to C is one bulb and B to D is two bulbs and, and perfect. D says the delta V from A to C, which is two bulbs, is greater than the delta V from B to D, which is also two bulbs. And that's our false statement. And they should be equal to one another. Uh, and so we've, we know the answer is D. But let's move on and look at E and F. The delta V from A to D, which is the sum of all the voltage drops of all three bulbs, is equal to the the, the change in delta V across the battery, and that's perfect. That's a true statement. And then finally, delta V from A to C, which is two bulbs, is the same as that from B to D, also two bulbs. That's a true statement. So we found our false statement. It's letter D. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. We have a Minds on Physics and a Concept Builder activity. The Minds on Physics a bit more conceptual, this Concept Builder is a bit more mathematical. There's a simulation where you can change a variable, observe the effects, and then finally we have our tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. I thank you for watching.